It's just over two weeks since three people in Botswana were found to have a new variant of SARS-CoV-2, the virus which causes COVID-19. And it's only a few days since South African scientists alerted the world. We're already seeing an uptick in new cases in Southern Africa, with a 48% jump in new cases compared with the preceding week. Here's what concerned the South Africans last week. They had a bad Delta surge a couple of months ago, which settled down. But look what happened in the province which includes Johannesburg. Omicron went from almost nothing to nearly 100% of genomes tested. Professor Eddie Holmes is one of the world's leading evolutionary virologists, and he thinks there are three possible sources of the virus. One is that it, must, it may have been hidden somewhere, perhaps in South Africa. We hadn't detected it for many months. Another theory is that um, maybe it's evolved in someone who's got a weakened immune system. Well, the third theory, which I think is possible as well, is that um, maybe the virus got into an animal somewhere, maybe again in South Africa. It's evolved in an animal, and that explains some of these strange changes, and then re-emerged in humans. So all those three um, roots are actually still on the table. These strange genetic changes are what also concern scientists around the world. A large number of mutations in the spike protein, which is the key to the virus entering the body, and the part which vaccines target. It's a little bit difficult to exactly equate the number of mutations with, in, in the spike protein, it's the key protein, with how well the virus will evade immunity. All the variants of concern have had quite different spike proteins. This is by far the most. This is actually why I think you, you've seen a level of concern happen so rapidly in the last few days. There are early signs that while we may see a surge in cases due to Omicron, vaccines will hold the line against severe disease. Some comfort along those lines comes from a patient of South African virologist, Professor Alex Siegel. This person was living with HIV and was at the same time infected with the COVID virus for months, which mutated so much, it produced a COVID variant, which had similarities to Omicron. This particular individual who had this infection was most asymptomatic. Uh, you figure you were infected with high levels of virus for, for half a year, uh, you know, the, the consequences might be extremely serious, but uh, uh, they were not. We've all heard the reports from South Africa in the last few days suggesting that this is mainly associated with mild disease. I think you take those a bit of a pinch of salt at the moment. The numbers are quite low. South Africa has a very young population. It's quite hard to kind of put that in context. But the other key question in this person who had both COVID and HIV was whether the mutated virus was resistant to current vaccines. So uh, the virus was resistant to the Pfizer but it didn't shut it down completely, that's for sure. And that may be reflected in what's been seen with Omicron over the last few days. There are some reports of uh, people who have been vaccinated uh, that who are uh, being infected, but of course this was also true for Delta. And there are reports of uh, uh, reinfections at a frequency we haven't seen before. It's very unlikely that the vaccine is going to be completely ineffective. It's most likely that the vaccine will still be protective um, and hopefully highly protective against severe disease, but we just don't have the data yet. From midday tomorrow, we will be suspending all flights from six Southern African countries. Nations across the globe have reacted strongly and quickly to the new variant by shutting borders either completely or partially. Already we've stopped the flights uh, in from nine countries uh, in Southern Africa. There is no scientific justification whatsoever for keeping these restrictions in place. Closing borders is a, is a knee-jerk response, uh, easy to do, you know. No, it's a, you know, travelers, uh, uh, non-citizens don't vote. You're not going to stop it that way. So should Australia change its public health measures in the light of this new variant? There is a growing consensus around changing our booster policy. So I think we really need to get our skates on over the things we can control. One is the third dose booster. I, I think we need to look at changing that recommendation from six months after the second dose to any time from two to six months after the sec second dose. 
Professor McIntyre would like us to keep wearing masks indoors and believes we should be controlling the borders at least until we know more about the virus. But the core challenge is in low to middle income countries who've largely been starved of vaccines by rich nations taking the supplies for themselves. In South Africa, just 24% of the total population is fully vaccinated. And across the entire continent, less than 10% have received two doses. And uh, uh, if there is uh, no equity, it's, it's not just a, a question of, uh, of a moral question. I think it's something that, uh, you know, different countries have to think of uh, very carefully because, you know, closing borders is not going to work. So in the end, you've got to address underlying problems globally. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.